welcome. Tonight, I really wanted to just have a little tea chat, maybe go through a couple different self-care rituals with you, such as making tea, lighting a candle, and pulling a couple tarot cards. I'm actually in my kitchen, which is why there's like a humming sound in the background. <laughs> Not ideal, but I'm here nevertheless. We'll see how it goes. I wanted to first make my tea as it needs to steep for about five minutes. this tea that I've shown before. It's from Harney and Sons Fine Teas from Walmart Marketplace, really. And it's Vanilla Komodo. You care to see? And it smells divine. beautifully like in these satchels so I think it's like that okay so that's the tea bag I'm just gonna plop that in <laughs> plop and carefully I'm gonna grab my water. So I have my tea kettle and I'm just gonna pour in the water. Ooh, make sure that doesn't fall in. This mug is from Bass Lake, California. It's so cute and like campy. Oh, I forgot to leave room for cream, but it'll just be a splash of the cream. So I'm not too worried. Um, I have a spoon here. To I'm gonna wait about five minutes per instructions. Let that just really steep. I like a caramelly vanilla black tea type of tea, so that's really my jam. I wish I had jam. I wish I had biscuits, which I do actually have a little snack which I will share. I have this plate here. It's just like a little... I realize I don't have really cute little plates except for like from random teacups sets that I have, so I definitely <laughs> just kind of took one. But I think having little saucers like this would be neat because I want to go ahead and try my French cookies or biscuits, if you will. Um, literally given to me from a friend from France. These, I think, are more butter biscuit type. And this is what it looks like. Isn't that so beautiful? It's so pretty. Yeah. I think it's little tin. I will keep this forever. <laughs> okay. Alright, so they're actually individually packed, which, you know, at least they're fresh. Um, this is the little butter cookies. Uh, says Le Mer Poulard so they're butter. Kind of like in the family of shortbread, I feel, in terms of like, you know, I could be wrong, but so put that away and look, it's like you're over my house and we're having tea together and just, you know, just chit-chatting, which 
which we love. really no way for me to open this gracefully. <laughs> oh, this one immediately broke. <laughs> Maybe that means good luck. I don't know. It says 1888 on it, so it must have been like the birth year. This isn't, isn't going to be like eating. I, I just want to really try it. Um, that's so good. This is like a tea sweet. It's like sweet, a little. It's just got that butter to it, you know, where it's just that savoriness of the butter without it being like heavy. I think I'm really gonna like make this my type of snack, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Has it been five minutes? Okay, it's actually been plenty of time, so I'm going to remove the tea bag. And I'm going to add some half and half. a splash. Nothing crazy. Let's see. Yeah. I always feel like I over cream my tea. Because <laughs> I'm so used to drinking coffee and like really getting that, you know, coffee is just like a lot more color um, and tea is just like not it looks like it's a lot darker, and then when you add cream, suddenly it's like white. <laughs> but I think that'll be fine. Then I'm also going to add some honey. Let me go ahead and try it. Ooh, that's really good. It's also decaf, which is great because it's like 8 o'clock at night. I think I might add a little bit more honey. and pumpkin pies by Aromas by Scylla, I believe. And it's a local candle maker near me, so um, it's definitely lasted a while. Oh, and it smells so fall. I'm just getting into the fall spirit and really enjoying Use a match.
we've lit the candle and I'm probably just gonna let it sit uh, in front of me but may our time together be of the autumnal feels and coziness and hopefully you can fall asleep to this <laughs> Okay, well, we have our tea and our candle lit, and hopefully you are feeling comfortable as well. I know for myself, I love a nice big t-shirt, comfy clothes, fuzzy slippers. Um, I think that is just my comfy outfit that I go to, and... I know it's still pretty warm for another few months here, but I look forward again to wearing warmer clothes like sweats. <laughs> the past few weeks for me have been a bit tough, but not like, um, I suppose like in an unmanageable kind of way. Like I feel like I've had worse seasons <laughs> behind me. Um, not to say not to discount the past few weeks. We had a loss in the family. One of my grandparents, um, who was ill for a little while, so it wasn't quite unexpected, but obviously that's still rough to go through. And then, um, I've just been having a lot of work at work, like my day job, uh, which is my full-time job. I'm in marketing and it's just been very busy, very busy, lots going on, and I think I can tend to get in my head a lot and feel kind of stuck in, I call it like mind gymnastics, where your mind is just going and going and going, and I feel like at the end of the day, I come home and I feel like my brain has run a marathon with how much work it's been doing, thinking, and just, just lots of quick, quick decisions that I have to make in every moment. So it's been important for me to try to find my anchors and combat my anxiety a bit better. For example, I've been listening to a podcast episode, maybe I'll link it below, about healing anxiety, and one of the really interesting comments or quotes from that podcast was talking about how we overestimate threats and underestimate our courage to kind of deal with things. That's me paraphrasing, but I just felt that that was so poignant for how I feel, where I feel like my mind will overestimate how much I need to worry about, when in reality, it's not quite that way, or I can deal with things, and I do get through things, and I survive, you know, or even more than survive, I thrive, you know, um, so I've just been trying to sit in the thankfulness, and rest, and play, play is so important, I forget how important it is, so, for example, last weekend we went to the fair, and I'd never been to the fair before, the state fair, if you will, or county fair. Um, so, different states have different county fairs, so like the LA fair, we went to the OC fair here in California, and it my, was my first time, I've never been, and so I was already kind of you know, anticipating some stress on trying to, like, find where things are and figure out what to do, but it was like we came in with a plan, but it was still something we didn't have to strictly abide by, and we got to kind of discover and explore, and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> so I absolutely have to share that the very first game that my husband played he ended up winning right away, and I got this little bear. He 
I thought that, that was like the first time anyone's ever won anything at a fair for me. I'm sure one of my parents won stuff for me, like in vending machines and stuff like that. But this was like a core, core memory was formed. So I got this cute little bear. I mean, they had so many stuffed animals. It was crazy. But this just literally, once I got this bear, it was like one of the first things we did when we got there. I literally felt like I lit up my inner child and I just it just felt amazing and I felt so excited to have my bear the whole night and it just felt so surreal and like I was kind of surprised about how giddy it would make me feel how romanticizing of the situation it made even more so because you know I could have walked into the fair and like had a very terrible experience like that could happen to any of us it's really kind of dependent on what happens but I think what happened was this made the rest of the night feel romanticized if that makes sense like a part of anxiety in the podcast I was listening to talks about how often it's a mindset where we give credibility to our fears and our worries but like in situations where you're a bit more, f- you know, lighthearted or you're more relaxed, you're not giving as much credibility to those worries because you're in a state of, you know, relaxation or play, play having fun, that kind of thing. So I'm so happy this little bear brightened my mood and helped me play a little bit and just remember kind of what human experience is supposed to feel like most days. (laughs) I know it's a balance of everything, um, but I think that's what it's about. It's about balance. It's about being courageous when you're, when needed, being relaxed, playing, enjoying things, having fun, and relaxing and resting, all all those good things just wanted to share the bear. (laughs) It's my symbol of play for for this week. I want to talk a little bit about my routine as of late. I have recently been just trying to build habits in my life that make me feel good and make me feel like a whole person. And currently where that is, because that changes, you know, there are seasons where, you know, you're going through it and you just have to like make time to get up in the morning, right? Like you just, that's kind of all the energy you have. But I'm finding that strangely this month, especially, I've been very reclusive, very like wanting to be to myself, not really like give a lot of my energy and time to other people except, you know, close loved ones. But I'm also still very protective of my time and I don't know what that is really. It's weird. Sometimes I have seasons where I really want to go out and like be around people. And then a lot, a lot more often I'm like, I just want to be home and do my thing and like be creative or, you know, make ASMR, read create things, like, that's just something, like, I really enjoy doing. Um, I don't find that I often miss anything, like, if I don't have people around me, but I think there's this sort of cultural pressure to feel like I should have people, and, um, I recognize that, and I still want to, like, make friends and all I guess for this month, I've actually given myself permission to not put myself out there as much and just like focus on myself and the things that I want to focus on. That for me, I think is a healthy decision. And then come September, there's going to be so much going on. So there will, there will be plenty of social stuff happening for me. And I just know this month I kind of need my, my space. So I've been focusing on balancing my diet, not like going on a diet, but just like eating really well most days, most of the week, and then still making sure I feed my 
cravings, if you will. Um, but I've just been very mindful about my eating habits and even how and when I'm eating. I've been an emotional eater before and, you know, still can be. I think I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how can I enjoy food because food is delicious and I don't want to get that up, give that up. Uh, I eat the butter cookies. I don't want to give up butter cookies from France. Like, I want to eat those. But I think it is about, like, portions and am I eating this to fill a need or escape emotions that I should really be, like, dealing with? Because otherwise, I'm just eating it because it's a fun thing to do and not because I'm actually hungry or anything. And if it is just a fun thing to do, am it, is it a joyful experience or is it more like I'm and you know what? For me, my emotional thing is a Starbucks drink frequently <laughs> throughout the week because of it makes me feel better about starting my work day. It's just that is my thing. I'm not really going to fully give it up. However, Starbucks drinks are in my control with like you know, not getting like super high sugar, high calorie drink, I can get something else that isn't as detrimental. Um, so that's kind of how I balance it out. But all this to say, I'm still a human being and we all need our pick-me-ups. I get it. I've just been trying to practice more mindfulness is kind of my gist here. I've been finally found an exercise that I can do and the trick for me was we have a stationary bike and I basically use that to exercise 30 minutes almost every day if I can it's really like five times a week on average so far and it's only been a couple weeks and at first I didn't I was hesitant to do it, but then I was just like, look, if I can do any kind of movement, if I, if I can at least start with something rather than zero and doing nothing, that's going to be way better than nothing. So I got on the bike and my trick is I watch my favorite Turkish drama show right now called Early Bird. You guys, one of the most amazing shows I've ever seen in my life. Um, I'll link it below. It's been a whole thing on TikTok, you know, like a subgroup of people on TikTok that love Turkish dramas. My whole world has been opened up. I just, it's so, it's a romantic comedy show, um, like novella, and there's like 100 episodes, and they're like 45 minutes, so all I do is like, I've been watching them before exercise, but I actually am so interested in this show that like I use it to also exercise and now I get excited about getting on my bike at the end of the day which I do it after dinner uh, I wait about like an hour after I eat to make sure that's all good and then I'll do my bike for 30 minutes take a shower go to bed and it's been working for me because that's just that's just how I can fit it in in a way that makes sense for me right it's now comfortable for me I know someday It'll change. I might get bored. I'll finish the show. That kind of thing. But I think I'm just trying to build the habit and start with something. And that's just where I'm focused right now. Not on any, like, fitness goals that, like, like, it's just not. That's, it's all about lifestyle for me because I know that that will last longer than any crazy, you know, goal that I'm trying to push myself. I'd rather it just be part of my life uh, in that way. And as you can probably tell, reading has also been important for me. I've been trying to get through A Court of Wings and Ruin uh, by Sarah J. Moss. Big, big boy there. <laughs> and um, sometimes I think I just feel like I get in the mood for different books. I have shiny object syndrome when it comes to books. I quit get excited about new things and forget about the other books I've already bought. So I'm really trying my hardest to get through books I've already bought. Um, and I do have quite a few, so I've actually paused reading this 
went to go read a couple different books and now I'm returning back to it. And I just have to say that fantasy is just where my heart really lies. Like, I love my rom com romance books, contemporary books, thrillers. Fantasy, though, is just like where my heart lives and what I've always really gravitated to. Sci-fi, fantasy, historical romance, that kind of stuff. Um, but I love a bit of magic, so this has really been feeding me and I get really excited and look forward to reading. It's mostly on the weekends. I have time to kind of really dive in. I've been really just loving this so far. Reading has definitely been my form, one of my forms of play, along with, you know, a good TV show. I would say my other form of play, you know, other than, like, going out, doing activities that are actually, like, playing things, um, I would say, for me, maybe video games, like a fun farming game. <laughs> Stardew Valley was a really great game for me last year. Um, for me, I'm just so good at farming games in the sense that like I can really build my farm very quickly. So I become so successful that I become sort of unenamored, if that's a word, with uh, disenamored. Basically, uh, it becomes less exciting <laughs> because I get my farm done so quickly in the, in the game. However, um, I know I'll return back to it now reading has been my form of entertainment. I guess I hope in this way, me sitting here talking to you, it's encouraging you to find your form of play and sense of wonder and, you know, not feel any pressure to subscribe to what the world might maybe make you feel like you need to partake in. Um, like, I know for me, a lot of the times, I don't really enjoy going to bars. Not because I don't necessarily don't drink alcohol. I do. But for me, I feel like it's really hard to hear people. I can't, like, hear what they're saying to me. Or we're just kind of sitting there. And I feel like sometimes I need activities. And, I don't know, daylight stuff, too. Because sometimes I don't want, like, at the end of the evening, I'm just kind of drained and would rather sit on the couch and watch a good show in my pajamas and, you know, we need to bring back day dates. <laughs> There's nothing like a good brunch, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just feel like, I just feel like a lot of the time I felt like that's what I had to go do. But it's become this thing where now I can think creatively about how can I enjoy my time with this person with an activity or something fun? You know, going outdoors, trying out like a fun class together or mini golf or trying a new restaurant or a new place or going to the fair. Just trying to find ways to experience life without it just like, you know, going to the bar, going to dinner. Because that can kind of get old really quickly. I... I'm not a huge journaler, but I did pick up a journal book, um, and I wanted to do basically a more, I have like a planner where I do a lot of lists and packing stuff or day-to-day -day lists, but this is more like emotional, right? Um, I don't do it all the time. If you're ever feeling like you just kind of need to write down what's going on in your brain, I kind of treat it like an interview. Like I'm interviewing myself. I know it sounds a little dissociative, but it works. So it's kind of like I ask myself questions like, how are you feeling right now? What do you think would help? What do you think isn't helping? Some of those simple questions can honestly be the most impactful. What do you want right now? What do you don't want right now? <laughs> what do you not want right now? And you'll be surprised how in that way you're just kind of answering questions without feeling the need to be like, Dear diary, today, you know, you don't have to do that. So I encourage 
that. You can even do it in your notes app on your phone. I do that all the time. And sometimes I'll be struggling with a, a particular situation and I'll even write down, you know, what are the issues you're experiencing with this right now? And I'll list out all the issues and then it's like, okay, maybe I can tackle some of these things and in these specific ways. And then I could put it like in my calendar or I can ask someone for help to help me out with this particular area that I feel confused about or I just don't know how to approach it. Um, I think in that way, you kind of get your muddled thoughts, your gymnastic thoughts down onto paper and kind of like outside of your brain and it alleviates some of that pressure a little bit. I know it doesn't get rid of everything, but it does help a little bit. So, definitely recommend. Write your feelings. So I'm thinking of just pulling some tarot cards and like one oracle card maybe, um, just so that we're not here for too long. So I have the star seed oracle by Rebecca Campbell and the fountain tarot. surrender, holding the opposites, extremes of life, and child of the cosmos, the intelligence of the universe lies within you. So, very beautiful artwork. Those are the two cards. So, leave those there. represents your present or your future. It's, it's more like how will these interact with each other. We'll figure it out. We have four of swords. Okay. So we can get another one. Oh, okay. It's saying this one. We have the lovers. swords and it says a quiet space the four of swords is often known as the meditation card it indicates that you are in or have just gotten over a difficult time and you need to rest reflect and reconnect with yourself when we are troubled our minds play tricks on us imagining hopeful escapes or tragic demises quieting your mind is an act of humility which allows you to enlist divine intelligence, your true voice. It won't make the problem go away, but in the space of stillness, you can bring fresh perspective and invite new ideas to appear. And the meaning is a time to quiet the mind, respite from difficulty, recuperation, engaged listening, release, gratitude. 
gratitude, a return to your center. Looking at this card, I didn't really immediately think that this was that meaning. Um, I haven't memorized the whole tarot deck, in case you wondered, so I often, like, don't remember. But this is actually very... kind of looks like he's getting ready for a nap. And I literally just talked about how reflective I wanted to be, or reclusive, and talking about anxious thoughts, so this is actually very on point, which is kind of scary. Let me look at the lovers next, and then we'll chat about those. The lovers. Okay. So, this is the lovers. And it says, choosing love, we all have unexplainable moments of knowing or recognizing ourselves in a person or a place intuitively. These moments of love are spiritual, like reuniting with a cosmic twin. They can restore balance and make us feel very happy. Unlike the title might suggest, the lover's card is not primarily about passion or romance. When these moments of love occur, they are about a choice. Follow your head or follow your heart. Love is not always convenient, easy, or painless, but the possibilities that arise from saying yes can bring lifelong joy in many areas. Follow your heart and choose love. It represents a choice, transformation, love, fulfillment of desires, a magical union, trust in one's heart, and harmony. I definitely feel like, at least for me, I can feel that this card is like my present mindset and moment, and maybe for you it is that, or it's asking you to think quietly, think from a point of rest, mm -hmm. instead of from, like, feeling like you're in constant motion, and you don't have a chance to, like, take a minute, and this card talks about choice and following your heart, which can feel very <laughs> broad and such an easy thing to say considering the world we live in and how we can't all just follow our heart every day, unfortunately. But that's not to say that there isn't a possibility, right? That there isn't a potential. I can often think of things that I've decided to do and I've thought, wow, I wish I would have done that sooner or why was I so holding myself back from that? And in a lot of ways, you just have to be ready to take, to say yes to something, right? So don't say yes unless you you feel it. But I think this card here is saying, allow yourself space to feel it first, you know? And then if it's not right to pursue something, you don't have to do it right now. You don't have to let that dream go for forever. It might just mean that it's not a yes right now and you're saying yes to it later. Or maybe you're saying yes to it right now, but you're starting out small. You're starting out with something that is manageable and doable. And I definitely feel like I can resonate with that. Um, yeah, I love these cards together. I feel like you have autonomy, even if you feel like it's hard to see that and feel it on a daily basis. It's there, and you do have some power to take a hold of. And so be encouraged in that. And then this card is reminding you to rest and create a quiet space for yourself to do that. And if it's hard for you to find that quiet space, it might mean reevaluating your schedule, your time, or asking for help to, to get that space. I know it's different for everyone though. So I hope you can find that space for yourself. I really do. That would be my wish for you. So next we have the oracle cards, fall into my arms, is the first one, and it says, The great mother ushered you in when you took your first breath, and she'll be there when you draw your last. She knows how challenging life can be, that being human can be lonely and confusing, that the polarity and separation can be excruciating when your soul remembers the oneness of source, but at the same time it can be incredibly glorious and sweet. So often we see things as either good or bad. When things go well, we make it mean that we're being rewarded. And when things are bad, then perhaps we've done something wrong. However, 
we're all here to expand and grow and it's through the extremes of life that we do exactly that. You're being invited to welcome the highs and the lows of the human experience to let them initiate you more fully into life, the agony and the ecstasy, the beauty and the bitterness. This life is but a single breath in the inextinguishable existence of your experience as a soul. The Great Mother wants you to hand over your loneliness, worries, hurt, sorrow, fears, burdens, and doubts. To lay them on her altar, to fall fully into her arms, to remember that while these extremes are difficult, they can also be magnificent. The more wildly the pendulum of your life swings, the more truthfully you can say, I've truly lived. This is really... <laughs> I feel like this is very... just relevant for all of us, you know, just how, how I feel like things can shift week to week, day to day in our own minds, right? In our lives, you know, for weeks on end can feel the same for some of us and for others it's changing drastically and we're all really shifting on different timelines. Um, but at the same time, on one time, I think it just creates a bit more empathy when you realize you're not alone in that and you're not um, not only empathy but maybe you feel less lonely because you know everyone else is having their own experiences someone else might be having a bad day someone else might be having worries I try to remember that <laughs> I really do I work with a lot of people who want things quickly all the time <laughs> And a lot of the time, I can quickly think, gosh, they just don't understand what they're doing, how they're impacting me. And yet, I understand they're being impacted by other people, asking them to push me to do things. And then there are some people who are just not nice people in the world. And we all kind of really realize quickly who those people are. I guess I'm trying to say that Usually the nice people you tend to interact with, if they're coming off stressful to you, um, it's likely they might be experiencing something that is causing them stress <laughs> and that they're not like a terrible person. Uh, once again, some people, some people are not that great and need a lot more work on themselves, but I like this. It's a good reminder to remember you can trust in yourself, trust in the universe, and understand life doesn't need to be so this or that, black or white. It's really like a mix of everything. Maybe we can look at it as like a rainbow instead. <laughs> okay, Child of the Cosmos is next. All right, we have, there's a mysterious force that governs all of life. An intelligence that tells flowers when to bloom and the tides and seasons when to come and go, that intelligence is within you too. It was there before you drew your first breath and will be there well beyond your last, which I feel like we just read that line in the other card. It's a part of you that informed every cell what to do when you were in your mother's womb. It's harder to resist this force than it, than it is to surrender to it, because Earth is a planet of polarity and free will. It's easy to forget that this intelligence exists within us. So often, we become disconnected from this pulse of life and fall into the pattern of believing that we're separate or feeling that we need to go it alone. We can feel isolated and as if we need to figure things out by ourselves to rely on our own strength. You're being called to remember the intelligence that's within each and every one of your cells, to remember that you're a precious child of a loving, gentle universe they have access to all of the intelligence, wisdom, strength, flow, and qualities there ever were, are, or will be. And to remember that if flowers know exactly when and how to bloom, then you do too. These cards were definitely meant for each other. Fall into my arms, child of the cosmos. They basically both said the same things, I want to say. This one's a little bit more like trust yourself. This one's more like understand you're not really alone. Um, but yeah, they're both saying like the same thing. 
evokes the same sentiments, and so it's really cool. I hope that these cards helped you feel encouraged to rest and kind of tap into your power a little bit over your life. I know that that's very loaded, full of different variables, but you have some power in there and I encourage you to explore it and foster it where you can, when you can, um, because you're a powerful person. I truly believe we all have our unique skills and capabilities that no one else really has and you can trust and at least trust in yourself first that's really important and really lean into just I guess that sense of compassion for others and humanity that in a lot of the times we, we show up for each other you know and for the times that we don't, we should learn from them and make better choices, right? For the future, for our communities. And yeah, I think it's important for you to know that it's okay to care for yourself and ideally care for those around you when they're open to it. <laughs> I know that's not always the case. will show up for you, I think, more more than you might realize uh, if you ask for it or you show that you trust them. Of course, go with caution, go with care. I am so glad we got to spend this little bit of time together and I do hope that you found it relaxing. With that, I will bid you good night. Bid you adieu wherever you are. I hope that you find your peace today, tomorrow, and this week. And I will see you soon 